Welcome back to the Catnip Podcast. My name is Grace, and today is Monday, May 26th. This is a podcast about knit, uh, what? <laughs> knitting books, <laughs> baking, and cats, but most importantly knitting, because that is what I love to do all day, every day. And I have a sleeping cat on the floor next to me, which I took some footage of, so you will get to see him. Um, if you like to follow me on any of my social medias, I have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Ravelry. I'm most active on Instagram, so please go follow me over on there if you'd like. Um, there's also show notes of things that I will be talking about, which will also have information about the yarn store that I work at. Um, all of that will be in the show notes, so if you're on my blog, everything is down below, or if you're on YouTube, everything is in the down bar. In, the, in a link down below? What do I say? I don't know. Um, I have a lot of knitting to show you. I feel like I say that every week. Because I do have a lot of knitting to show you, but um, I need to come up with more creative ways to say that, really. Um, yeah, I have some, some new cast-ons, plural, cast-ons, um, and I am not ashamed, I am loving all of them, and I have made a lot of progress on a lot of things. So, we have a good knitting week this week. I did real good. Also, it's not Monday. Now that I'm talking about it, it's not Monday. It's Tuesday. Yesterday was Memorial Day in the States, and so we had a fun day with Sam's family, hanging out at their house, just chilling and playing games, um, all that jazz. So I'm recording on Tuesday. It's Tuesday the 26th, not Monday. Anyway, that being said, in the intro, if you like to grab something tasty to drink, something to snack upon, something to craft upon, an animal to snuggle, or laundry to fold, or all of the above, you can come back and join me for some crafty chat. I have water today. It's boring. But I did have a very delicious date shake that I'm going to talk about later. So, water for right now. Where hydration is important. Yesterday was Monday. Normally when I record, today is Tuesday because that's how the days of the week work. Brilliant thought right there. Um, so yeah, I did have an extra day of knitting. Yesterday I did cast on two things. One of them is test knit, so there is that. One of them is not, but that's okay because it's on a big needle and that makes things so much better. Um, I am in the downward slope of my Pinguono, which is super exciting. I get to show that to you guys this week. Um, there are books I want to talk about. There's um, a shake smoothie thing I want to talk about. Um, when I say date shake, I don't mean like Sam and I went on a date. I mean date as in like the fruit because it's a fruit, because it's got a seed, a pit, because that matters right now. Um, <laughs> it's very good, and I want to talk about it because it's just amazing. Anyway, there's books, knitting, um, yeah, so what knitting do we want to start with? Let's start with this one because it's just easy right here. So last week, everyone, I have, I, a little, I had fallen behind in my, or behind, in my um, test knitting, like, progressy plan, whatever. Um, also, I don't think that was finished. Oh, so I guess I do have the finished object to show you. This is another thing. See, I, I again, I don't remember. So we'll show you this finished object. Did I show you this? I don't remember if I did. I apologize if I did, but I finished my perplexity wrap by Tiff Nealon of Tiffany Lind hand knits. Ooh, my eyes itchy. Again, it always happens. Um, this is a DK worsted weight bulky um, shawl, asymmetrical shawl knit on big needles. She's going to have uh, different uh, weights of yarn in the pattern. It's a good stash buster, uses six colors. But I'm sure you could use more or less depending on what you had or what you wanted to use. Um, so this is very exciting. It has not been blocked, but all my ends are woven in. Though it may not look like it, they are woven in. Because I wove them in as I went to save time. Thank you, Stephen West. Um, and I'm thanking him because he was the one who taught 
me and a group of people how to do that. I know there's other people who came up with that. Maybe. I don't know. I know Stephen West is not the only one to do it. The point is, is that I learned it from Stephen West. It's <laughs> my claim to fame over here. <laughs> um, so this is done. This is very exciting. I finished that, mm, I think actually the day that I recorded last week, so that would have been Monday, opposed to this week, because it's Tuesday. Um, so that is really good. I finished that. That is not out yet like pattern published wise but I'll let you guys know when that does come out um, my next test knit that I had fallen behind on a little bit or in my planning scheme had fallen behind on was my um, Hedra Helix pullover which is my I'm just calling it my brioche pullover I have a bit of a sleeve and I figured out rows repeats wise how much I need to do a day to get it done quickly because that's the goal. You know what? When you have deadlines and you need to get it done in a certain amount of days and or like it's not even like an important deadline but you just want to get it done within a certain amount of days then you can make it work. Do your math because we all love doing math. No we don't. But we do because <laughs> it helps us get things done. Um, and yeah we just move forward. So last week I had set the goal of finishing the body of my pullover. It's done. And granted I know it looks kind of small and not like the picture, but it will block out because it's brioche. And I love it. So much. Like can we, I did like a pat on the back for how good this brioche looks. Like I did a good job. Was it easy? Not always. Did I figure it out? Yeah. Did I get very frustrated at sometimes? At some points? Yes. For sure. I also went ahead and did the border or um, edging collar thing up at the top because that way I could fully be done with those needles the, with my longer cord and move those to a different project. Um, so yeah, this is by Rosemary, um, the woolly one on Instagram. She's got a lot of beautiful designs and I'm so excited about this. So my goal last week was to have a finished body and this is not quite half a sleeve, but I feel like with how long the sleeves end up being, this could potentially be close to halfway. I don't know. I need to double check. This is not close to halfway. I take that back. That's very incorrect. But um, I've done all my increases. I've done all that. It's amazing how fast you can go when you only have a certain amount of stitches to go around. It's insane. Um, why is this so hard to, it's like not wanting to unfold. Why does it look like that? I don't know. I just don't want stitches to fall off, really. There we go. So yes, we have the same motif. motif. Yeah, I just love these little motifs. Um, the same motif on that's on the body on either side, on the front and the back. They're both different. Um, and I believe we you have the option to decide on how you place and situate these brio sections. So you can either have them facing up like on the top of your arm, like that, or you could have it like that, just depending on what you want to do. So there's that way, or there's that way. And I mean, really, you could just do it in any way you wanted to, but um, that was a suggestion in the pattern. I think I'm going to do it this way because I like the look of patterning up the side of the sleeves. I think that's really beautiful looking. Um, this is Baroco Vintage DK, which I am a massive fan of. When in doubt, knit with Vintage DK. <laughs> um, really wonderful, really, really great. This very nice Heather colorway 
heather, no, it's not heather colorway. It's a gray heathered, heathered gray colorway. That's what I was thinking. Um, and it is just beautiful. So like, that's just so gorgeous. It's so soft too. I know that it's also probably like my gauge and also the fact that brioche is literally just the squishiest thing in the entire world. Um, but like, it's just gorgeous. Oh man. Like, why would you, like, like that's gonna look so good on a sleeve. Like, can we even, oh man. Like, yes. I love that. So, that's very exciting. Um, I need to, for one, figure out how long exactly the sleeves are. Um, and then make adjustments and put those in because yes so fun times are ahead need to figure some stuff out but that's okay just plugging along the um, deadline for that is not till the end of June or sometime in June so I'm not worried about it making good progress. I am now very familiar with the brioche charts. <laughs> Can we fast forward to the, the time where I was talking about how I was so afraid of brioche charts and now I would tell you, no big deal. Just look at your symbols. It's okay. It'll be fine. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. Birdie snoring. <laughs> I think he's streaming. Also, I do realize last week I made a big deal about how um, I was not sitting in the chair because I had a very spoiled cat who was sleeping in said chair. And this week there is no spoiled cat on the chair and I have just decided to sit on the floor anyway. Um, I would tell you, I don't know why I did that. I just wanted to sit on the floor. <laughs> you know, cause that makes sense. But we have nice decorative pillows. We've got nice yarn. It's all good. And this way I get to be closer to the cat. And yes, I just, I don't know. I just wanted to sit on the floor this morning or today because it's not the morning. I don't know. So everyone, um, those are my test knits. This is a big item. Mm, you may be able to tell what this is because I see some beautiful welts. Um, so, I have brought this in here and it won't be kind of hard to see. But everyone, I'm on the i cord bind off and it's taking forever. Is that a surprise? No, not at all surprised by that. Um, but, uh... I could have gotten this done if I really, really tried. I know I'm holding this up and I'm like, look, I got it done. <laughs> I almost got it done. And you're like, wow, that's just the collar. <laughs> um, oh, I am so sorry. I just, oh, Bernie, I'm sorry. I knocked over the yarn. We'll just put it like that. That's not helping. We'll put it like that. There we go. It's just the gloriousness of, oh my, this is very hard to show off. Like, can we? Oh man. Sleeve, sides, another sleeve, Ooh, another sleeve, another side. Um. Show you the back with the welts. This is so hard to show. <laughs> it's so big. Um, so have I lost any stitches? Is that the real question now? No, I have not. So really, I only have like that much to do left of my uh, I cord bind off, which is really like down the fronts and the bottom which in the grand scheme of things is not that much. Um, 
basically I think I'm halfway through. I am so excited. <laughs> like, I can't even begin to tell you. I, um, I don't know, had I done the sleeve when I showed it to you last? I don't remember. Because I finished this one, the first sleeve at one point, and I put it on, and I did not take it off for a while. Even though it was still kind of, like, in pieces, or the, the second sleeve hadn't really been attached yet. Um, also, I remember what I wanted to talk about this. So, the first sleeve took me a long time. It maybe took me about three or four days. Um, and that's, I was working on other things, granted, and I was uh, busy, and because life still goes on, still gotta do stuff. Um, and it, it's also just a massive project, and so I was doing things that I couldn't work on a really big project on, if that makes sense. I needed something small. Or, oh, big stretch, stretch out that little foot. Oh, I just want to squeeze your little foot. Oh my goodness, sorry, that was distracting. I just saw a little cat foot, like, stretch out, because he's stretching. Hence, I said he's stretching. Um, so, the first sleeve took me a while. Took me more time than I thought it would. But, on, on the other hand, we said this about the fronts, we could say this about literally anything. First one always goes slower. Second one always goes faster. And that would still be true of this penguono. My second side went faster and I finished. I like knit the last maybe 10 rows of the first sleeve, constructed the second sleeve, and finished the entire second sleeve in a day. Maybe an afternoon. So, things go faster the second time. <laughs> so you may be like, I completely understand of it being just like, wah wah, I have to make two of these. I'm not looking forward to it on this brioche sleeve, but I'm hoping it, the same thing will apply. It'll just go faster, and I mean, this first one's already going pretty fast, but, like, you've already knit one of one thing, and you're like, okay, well, I'm done. I'm ready to move on to something new. I am experiencing second sock syndrome or second sleeve syndrome or whatever, it, second mitten syndrome, syndrome, whatever it may be. But we can also remember that at this point, you have been through the pattern at least once, having finished one of them. So you are way, way more familiar with what's going on. You can go faster. You know how to where you should take notes. You have something to like compare the other one to. So if you're like, if you were trying to figure out where you're placing your increases and decreases, you've already done that. You don't need to plan anymore. You just follow it so it matches the um, the first one. And, like, that's just going to take out less time. Um, so, yeah, I uh, am very... <laughs> um, on one hand, I'm, like, irritated that the, the first thing, first side, first sleeve, whatever, always takes me longer. But on the second, on the other hand, the second hand, whatever you want to call it, like, the... It's just great joy in being able to finish something so quickly. And you're like, yes, I thought it was going to be like a slog through a sleeve. Or like I want—I was just really dreading working on the second mitten because I don't like doing two of, thing, this two of the same things. Um, especially when they're back to back. Like knitting two, two of the same pattern is one thing. Um, unless you're making 12 of them for Christmas presents. That happened a long time ago. <laughs> I did that. I did the same pattern for, it wasn't 12, that's an exaggeration. There may have been eight of them. Um, but still, that's a special occasion. It was a special situation. That's not normal um, everyday knitting. So knitting two of the same pattern, not back to back is one thing, but knitting the same pattern in regards to a sleeve, a sock, or a mitten, or something like that, back to back, 
is kind of a little bit of like, oh, my brain is tired. My brain just wants something new. I want to do something new. Um, <clears throat> I have some mohair in my throat. Because that's what happens when you knit with mohair. Granted, I know that I have an entire massive sweater that has a lot of mohair in it, and now I'm going to be doing, dealing with that a lot, but worth it, because this sweater is glorious. I am so proud of this sweater. If it wasn't on the needles right now, I would be putting it on. So the goal is, by next week, to have a finished penguono to show you. I've already planned out my outfit of what I want the, the pictures to look like. I'm very excited. It'll be awesome. It's a penguono of spirit colors, a penguono of memories. I love it so much. And I, um, I don't know, I, I feel like I'm just very, very proud and I'm very happy with how my colors, like that's a beautiful sleeve. Like can we even? how my colors turned out and like that's my second sleep. I'm so happy with how it turned out. Um, sometimes I had no idea what I was doing. I had no color plan. Other times I was like, these are the yarns I want to use. Like I knew from the beginning that I wanted a dark border and I wanted dark cuffs and I wanted a dark collar, but I wanted a light border at the bottom and I wanted light, lighter sleeves. The rest of it was just kind of like, I have no idea. I'm just going to play around with some colors and have some fun. And I did. And I still had fun in all of the other ones that I still have plans on and it's just so deliciously squishy. And it's knit on big needles, and oh my goodness, that is quite a hefty sweater. So, that was quite a lot of knitting progress done. Very proud of it. And it should be done by next, next week. Because that I-cord will not take me an entire week. Or since I'm recording on Tuesday, six days. So, it will be done. So, ouch, my water bottle fell on my, water bottle fell on my foot. Um, next up, let's talk about, that's a new cast on, we'll say that. We'll talk about my powder and dust. I got so much done. Everyone, like can we even, I am only knitting with one color now. Am I in the middle of, no I'm not. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm sorry, this is like, what, the third or fourth week that I will be in the middle of a row when I try and show this to you guys? What is my problem? I just need to get it together. I am not in the middle of a row. I can, oh my goodness, this is just gorgeous. Ta-da! This is my powder and dust shawl by Vera Valamaki. And I love it so much. This first color is Life in the Long Grass. The second color is Sugar Plum Circus. And this last color, the dark chestnutty color, is Peep Lulu. Peep, peep Lulu. Ooh, I'm very blue now. Um, fields. It's a triangular shawl, three colors. Um, got lace. We got some fading. Lots of garter stitch. All oh, garter stitch. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I am literally, I'm just on my, on the border now, and I used up a lot of the middle color. I used up almost all of the middle color, which is crazy, because, like, it doesn't necessarily look like I used a lot, just because it blends in so nicely, and then it blends in down here, so it looks like this is all I really used of this middle color, but I used almost that entire skein. Um, so just plug it away. I got enough stripes of what I wanted. Um, and this is what I'm working with. And I'm probably just going to work on it until I like the size of the border. Also just to kind of keep plugging along because I'm enjoying knitting on it. The only reason why I would 
stop is to use the needles. Because <laughs> I have some shawl plans coming up, but I'll talk about that next week. So, from last week, I can show you, let's turn this little guy around. Look at all that knitting that I did. Ooh. Like, that's a lot. That is a lot. That is really not showing you very well how accurately, or accurately, how much knitting I did. There we go. Look at that. Look at that from there to there. That's a lot of knitting, because these are not short rows. Not, I'm not actually doing short rows, and these are physically not short rows. Haha, <laughs> that was a knitting joke there. <laughs> I'm so funny. <laughs> was that really a joke, though, or was I just making a statement? I don't know. I thought it was funny. I made myself laugh, so hopefully you laugh, too. If not, if you rolled your eyes at a bad at the at that being a bad joke, that's totally understandable. Um, so yeah, I I did a lot. I'm very happy with that. I've also really enjoyed having this little this stitch marker. It brings me such joy. We got this. I got this in a set of stitch markers when we were um, coming home from our. Alabama trip last year um, and this was the Southern Twist Yarns and there were some other really cute cat stitch markers and then this is from Sucra Sucra Miniatures and yeah I don't know it's just it's really at this point it's just very peaceful I really enjoy it and I just want I know it's going to be massive, and so now I'm just embracing the massiveness of the shawl, and I want the border to be really big. Also because I love the color, and I really want more of it. I'm also trying to decide tassels or pom-poms or neither. I don't know. Um, and if so, what colors? Do I do it all three? Do I even know where the first color is? I don't know. I have to think about it. So, I don't see that foreseeing being done. I'm sorry, what did I just say? I don't see foreseeing. Hmm, that doesn't make sense. I don't foresee myself being done with that next week. Um, which is fine. That's not the plan. Or that's not my goal. So, that's okay. I also did a little bit of work on my Cozy Days cowl. Doo -doo -doo. I believe that's actually the wrong side. Even though it looks like the right side, it's not. This is the, the right side. Which is really... <laughs> when patterns do that, when they have the, wrong, the normal wrong side on the right side, and then it's just, it really messes with my brain. It's like, I'm sorry, uh, what? <laughs> creates a beautiful effect though um it's just it confuses me because <laughs> everything I would like normally line up of like oh well I do the decrease on the right side and it's like well actually it may look like the right side but you actually don't um so this is a um covid yarn purchase from long dog yarn which I am loving so much. I have sea glass on her mohair and then pinky swear in her single yarn and I'm loving it. So yeah, this is just a long, wrong side. A long cowl that is like a chevroni and then I will, um, it's not super wide really. I did, oh, I also, <laughs> if you remember, me complaining about this about the cord that it was on I did change needles because also those needles needed to be used for something else which I'm about to show you um but it didn't take me that long to switch over the needles so yes I'm not in any hurry to get this done it's just kind of like it's there for me to work on I know I will be getting close to when I need to focus on the lace pattern, in which case that will become more of a mind project, but I mean, 
that's what powder and dust was so and that's not done yet <laughs> but I mean it's always good to have stuff like that to work on and that's really fun so that is that and now everybody we have some new cast rods um so I have a new test knit and I did show you this yarn last week um also this is in my New England farm to fiber Boston public market bag and I love it because it's like we're celebrating the sheep and I love that I have not actually been here my parents have been here and they brought me back yarn in this bag um but anyway so this is a um test knit for skein yarn by skein yarn so that's very very exciting it's a very like cropped summery tea it's called the duet tea um and I finally got a cast on and this was like my one of my Memorial Day cast-ons, and I got a lot done. Also, can we even with this yarn? I'm about to show it to you. I just can't even. It's going to be so blown out, but it's amazing. Um, I actually don't know what this yarn is. This was a yarn that was given to me from someone's stash, and I think it could be Hedgehog. I believe it is Hedgehog. I don't know what the colorway is. It's not showing up very well on my camera. Maybe on the computer it will, but. So, oh man. Looks great, right? Looks like it's definitely gonna become a summery tea. <laughs> um, we, so like there's some short rows that I did really quickly and now I'm just knitting to a certain amount and then I will start on the front because I think this is actually the back because I think what it's so imagine if this was the back this is what it would look like and then I would I'm gonna pick up and do stuff and go back the other direction so that's very exciting this is my top color it is a two color top and whoops here we go Here's some weird noises. Don't know what they are. I think Sam is listening to something while he's sifting the kitty litter, which is very nice. Um, so this is the top. This is going to be the bottom, and I'm so excited. This is very, like, there are colors in this yarn that are for sure my favorite. Like, there's purple, and there's, like, really beautiful teals, and there's pinks. And I love some of these like peachy corally colors, but I don't really knit with a ton of yellow. I say that and I'm wearing a yellow shirt, um, I, but I don't knit with it either, really. Like there's very few yellow items that I have and there are a few tones of yellow that I look good in. And this happens to be one of them, as does this one in my opinion. Um, so I'm really excited to be doing something that's very much like I don't have anything like this. This is super fun. It makes me happy. It's super summery. And I think with this blue, like that's just so much fun. I love it. So this is really exciting. This is going so quickly. Like I did all this in a day, plus all the short rows and stuff. Um, this was one of my hangout and play spicy uno with my in-laws, which I didn't know was a thing until yesterday. <laughs> I now know. Um, and it's very fun. It's really just random extra rules. Like if someone plays a seven, no one can say anything until another seven has been played. And then if you happen to say something, then um, you get a card per word that you say, which is very entertaining. And oh my goodness, things were <sighs> like, if you don't know if seven is being played or has been played and then you say something and you happen to have 10 words in your sentence, you get 10 cards. And that's really a bummer deal when you're playing Uno. So it's stuff like that. And um, lots of laughs were had a lot of fun. So I got a lot of knitting done yesterday and I also have another cast on. So my second cast on, which is very exciting, this was another um, 
COVID purchase. Um, this is green yarn. It's beeping. Hmm. Um, this is Cascade 220 Superwash Merino, and I believe it's in the verdant green colorway. I could be completely wrong because the label just has a number. But on Ravelry, their verdant green was an option, and I thought that that described this, but I don't actually know that, so I need to double check that. <laughs> it's a problem when you just have numbers for your colorways and Ravelry tells you differently. Anyway, I'm very excited about this. This is a knit along that I am doing with a friend, and then also my mom has yarn to make this as well. We got this yarn from Maker and Stitch, which is in Edwards, Colorado. Um, they, I have never actually been to their store, but my mom has been, my parents have been multiple times. They love it. I know that the ladies there are just so sweet and so kind. Um, I hope to go someday. Um, not right now, obviously. Someday. Um, but this is from them and it's, once again, so soft. I love it. Also, I just don't, I don't know what it is. It could be just me. So let me know if you feel this way as well. But I feel like there's, it's just so satisfying to work from the outside of these kinds of balls of yarn because you can see it's just very satisfying to watch it get smaller and then also just unravel and then you can see the inside of the skein and what does that look like and it's just like ah, I'm making progress and I'm like what are you probably like what are what are you knitting on just stop showing us the skein of yarn and talk about what you're knitting so knitting on this on a ten and a half because I did say it was big needles. I am knitting the Felix Pullover by Amy Christophers. Oh, it shows up so nicely. It's a little bit more blue in person. I say blue, it's got like blue under, or it's a cooler green on my camera currently. It's showing up very warm, like a very warm, verdant green potentially <laughs> but I don't know because it's just a number um so yes this is a pullover and it's got these just like oh man these yarn over lace pattern designs on where the raglan goes and oh my goodness everyone can I I'm just gonna geek out a little bit about sweater construction here sounds super nerdy but no shame um so normally if you were to be making a top-down raglan sweater you would have your increases here on the front so you'd have a, a front, oh this is backwards, a front, a sleeve, you'd have another one here, another increase here, your back, an increase, your sleeve, an increase, and your front. Um, or just one front depending on what you're making. And normally you would have increases such as make one right, make one left, knit front and back, whatever. Those kinds of increases, some have yarn overs, whatever but it's like always here and here. And that's where these guys are, right? This, there is, this whole thing is taking the place of that. Like, can we even, is that not so cool? Like, I don't, I don't even know how that works. <laughs> I mean, I do, but I don't, like, I didn't realize that's how this sweater was constructed. And just like figuring that out as I was going along, I was like, this is some new construction that I have never experienced. It's super easy and really wonderful. And I think it will fit really well. And I'm just so excited. Like, that's so cool. So instead of having like a line I mean, you do still kind of have a line like down the middle of this. Oh, this is backward. Oh, this is hard to do. <laughs> you have a line. Oh, dang it. <laughs> line like that. Um, 
but instead of having like a row of like increases, oh, I know, I can show you. Here's an example, this is perfect. See, this is why it helps to never put away your knitting or your, the, your um, projects that you wear because then you can use them as examples on your podcast if you never put things away. away. So here we have, this is my trilogy pullover. I love it so much. But, so you can see here we have the front, two sleeves, we got two in the back and the back, and then we've got these lines of increases. And you can see like where my knit front and backs happened, which is not a big deal. Like that's, the, the point was not to hide them. Um, but you, they make a very obvious line, which is fine because that's how raglan um, sweaters work. But, so with this, you don't have that. You have these lace panels. And I just think that is fascinating and I think that's very ingenious and I don't know how she came up with that idea, but I am in awe. And I want to make like 10 of these sweaters, even though I'm not even to dividing for the sleeves yet. That being said, I did do most of this last night. <laughs> I did the ribbing in my in-laws house, we got home, and then I did all of that. <laughs> Short rows, lace, I've got the lace memorized now, so I'm good to go. I am good to go. I got it put on my big needles because I started off on a 16 inch, and now I've got my chow goos with my sharp points, and I'm just loving it. I foresee this being a favorite sweater. I also love this yarn. So yeah, if you can, I don't know, if you have the ability to um, knit with Cascade 220 Superwash Merino, I would highly recommend it. Um, Maker and Stitch, they have some. They're also a really amazing yarn store that is always wonderful to support. So. That is my new cast on, and this is an old sweater. Or not an old sweater. Man, this happened recently. <laughs> That's crazy. That, like, this happened... Did this happen in quarantine? It did! That's crazy. Because this feels like forever ago. Another favorite sweater. So, it's crazy, man. Time is weird. Time flies. Time goes slowly. There is there anything really in between? Sometimes it feels like both, and then you're like, what is going on? What, what, is, what is life? I have no idea. How much knitting have I gotten done? I don't know. <laughs> I do know that I got a lot of knitting done this week, and I'm very excited, and I'm proud about myself. <sighs> Grammatic incorrect grammar. I am proud of myself for getting as much knitting done as I did. Also having the extra day somehow helped because I had two new cast-ons and they both went very very quickly. So very quickly um, my battery is running low but I have some books to talk about. One book that I finished last week. Mm, yes last week. It's called The Fatal Inheritance. Fatal. I just wanted to pronounce that correctly. Fatal Inheritance by Rachel Reese. It was a lot of fun. It is kind of, it's a mystery. And it gave me some vibes of a lot of different things that really just like brought joy to my heart because they were all combined in the, um, I believe it's in the south of France. I could be completely wrong. I think it's in the south of France. Somewhere in France. I should know that, but I don't. I do apologize. So we've got French in the story. We've got like French beaches. We've got the French, I don't think it's the French Riviera. I don't remember. All that stuff combined with Agatha Christie. Some like movie star, 1950s Hollywood 
drama of Americans while being in France with all these people. We've got La La Land. There was something else that really reminded me of it. Oh man, what was it? I don't remember. Dang it, there was something else that was very good to describe it. But it's real good. Um, I don't know. It's so it's this woman who is living just a very like humdrum life in London with a husband who she's not very happily married to. Um, and she doesn't like things are just really boring and she's not enjoying what's going on right now. Um, and so randomly she gets a letter and telling her that she is part of this really massive inheritance somewhere in the south of France and um, she needs to go and figure that out and be part of this family that she's not related to but somehow like she's part of this will and inheritance that they are also part of so that asks the question how in the world is she connected to this man that has just died that is the father and whatever husband to all this family because she has no connection to him whatsoever that she is aware of. She gets there and then there's just like fun adventures of like going on in the south of France I think and 1950s and the Hollywood drama and parties and fancy dresses and then trying to figure out how is this lady related to this man who died and figuring out his story and how is it connected with her mother and her like distant relatives and her husband and it's just like so good. It was not like, oh my goodness, best book I've ever read in my entire life. Not groundbreaking, but highly entertaining. Very much like, I want a beach read that's got some mystery to it that's not too intense. And it was very fun. I really enjoyed it. I would highly recommend it if you're looking for like a lighter, fluffier. It's not fluffy necessarily. I wouldn't say it's fluffy because it did have a very good storyline and you did like you can think about it because one anybody can think and two it's got a mystery in it so if you're trying to figure out the mystery then yeah you can think about it um it was really wonderful I listened to it on an audiobook and it it's also broken up different timelines so you have excuse me, the woman who found out that she has this inheritance and then also the man who died and what him, he was like leading up to when he died actually of like him trying to make things right, I guess, or like what, what happened to leading up to when he died and like figuring out how that is connected. So then you can kind of put those two timelines together and it's confusing but it's also written really well and it's a lot of fun and also 1950s in France and um glamour and the Riviera and beaches it's so much fun I really enjoyed it would highly recommend it for sure so that'll be linked in the show notes and then also this is a book that is really wonderful. We have not cooked out of this, it's a cookbook. We haven't cooked out of this book in a while, except for the past couple of days. And like I said, did he move this? Oh no, he didn't move this. Um, now I have to find it. Um, if you are unfamiliar with the amazing Food Network person, Alton Brown, he's wonderful. Um, he has been doing little, like, invade his kitchen or visit his test kitchen or whatever, I don't know, little videos of, like, him making quick things with stuff he uses in his kitchen. He's hilarious, would highly recommend. But anyway, he recently made date shakes, and, um, I had never had one. Apparently Sam used to make them a lot. Um, but he has a recipe for one in his cookbook which is wonderful. But he also has the recipe in this video that he made, so you don't have to get the entire book to get this recipe for date shakes. I'm sure there's also other recipes for date shakes. But 
a lot of these recipes are really, really amazing. I would highly recommend it. But anyway, um, date shakes, really wonderful. You put some dates, some milk, some bananas, some cold brew, so it's also caffeinated. Some honey or agave, dark agave if you have that. We also added some peanut butter protein powder to make it a little proteiny. Because we had just worked out. Um, and oh my goodness, it is so good. Also, I would highly recommend his chewy peanut butter cookie recipe, which I have made quite a lot. There are very few ingredients. Um, you really could like mix it with your hands if you wanted to. It's peanut butter, brown sugar, regular sugar, and egg, baking soda, vanilla, and salt. That's all it is. Um, and those are insanely good. And now I'm getting hungry. Oh man, I want to make all these things out of here. Anyway, it's a really fun book. There's some very different things in here like cucumber lime, yogurt pops. Wouldn't have thought to make that. That sounds like fun. Um... I have his uh, spaghetti sauce is also very good. I've made that as well. Kimchi crab cakes. That sounds delicious. I'm also really hungry. Anyway, would highly recommend this book. I know you can probably get it on Amazon, but you could also find your local bookstore or a bookstore that you know of in a different location and see if they have it. And that way you can support local bookshops, which I'm sure I know are struggling right now. So before you check Amazon, go check somewhere else. Find a local bookstore. Does You don't even have to have been there before. You just find a local bookstore <laughs> and maybe find it there. Um, would highly recommend this book. It's super fun. He also has it divided up for morning, coffee break, noon, afternoon, evening, anytime, and later. Um, Chalk Apocalypse cookies. I don't think I've ever made that. We're going to take a look at that because that sounds amazing. Do I need to soften some butter? Chili glazed wings. Oh my, those look very good. Okay. We've got bittersweet chocolate, chopped, unsweet chocolate, chopped, flour, baking powder, salt, eggs, vanilla, butter, brown sugar, bittersweet chocolate, chopped, milk, chocolate, chopped, and cocoa nibs. Oh my, that's like all of them. <laughs> it's funny, on this... Uh, recipe on the said pattern. This recipe description it says the goal was simple pack more chocolate into a cookie than had ever been packed before. <laughs> I like that. So I like this idea. Oh, I see. The first things of chocolate were actually to make it chocolatey because they're not, they're like chocolate cookies. Mm, this sounds like fun. Might have to try this. Sesame, open sesame. I'm just getting hungry. We need to finish this podcast. I do apologize. I'm very distracted. Anyway, would highly recommend that book. Would highly recommend The Fatal Inheritance. Um, yeah, fun times. <sighs> baking. I did baking. What did I bake? Did I bake anything? Oh, we got an apple pie from Costco. That's insanely good. Also massive. Also not very expensive. It's huge. It's also delicious. Um, didn't bake that though. <laughs> they did all the work for me. Um, I think that is all that I have for you guys this week. So next week I have some fun stuff coming up. Very fun stuff in the works. But we'll talk about it next week. Thank you so much for tuning in for this week's episode. Thank you for hanging out and dealing with all my rambles. We didn't talk about the weather, but we could because, oh my goodness, we had the biggest storm last night. <laughs> you know, it was a big storm. Anyway, now is not the time to talk about the weather. 
Um, if you'd like to follow me on any of my social medias, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or Ravelry, all of that will be in the show notes, as well as yarn store information and things that I have talked about. If you are interested in buying any of the, the books that I mentioned, any of the books, it makes it sound like it were a lot of them, either of the two books that I mentioned, check your local bookstore first. They could definitely use the business. Would highly recommend a lot of amazing bookstores out there. They are wonderful. Um, and there's that all the projects. Hope to have some finished objects for next week, which would be very exciting. Moving forward, moving forward. Hope you had a wonderful weekend and you continue to have a wonderful week. If you have crafty plans, I hope that they are successful. Um, I'm just moving forward with everything. For sure, want to finish the Pinguono. For sure. Maybe, ooh, I don't know. Could I finish the Felix letter? I feel like I could if I really worked at it, but I don't know because I also need to work on my testament. And I, both testaments actually. Maybe we should do some more math and figure out schedule wise how does that work because that is very easy to figure out. Anyway, again, thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. Enjoy this clip of Birdie. He is currently snoring and he's just so cute I can't even I'm gonna give him a snuggle and then go fold some laundry because that needs to be done anyway thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you